This is Scott Becker with the Becker Private Equity and Business Podcast. Come to you daily with short business episodes, short private equity episodes, as well as interviews with brilliant private equity and business leaders. Today's discussion is private equity under attack, a defense to that attack. We're joined today by Amber Walsh, a brilliant leader in the private equity sector who spends a ton of her time at that intersection of private equity and healthcare. Over the last year or so, and more recently, there's a bill in California. Private equity and healthcare has been under attack. There's been some bad outcomes. There's a steward healthcare situation. There's some other situations where high leverage, low margins have caused trouble. Amber, tell us about this sort of attack on healthcare investing by private equity, whether it's right, wrong, in between. What is your take on all of this? Yeah, this is a really interesting topic, of course, highly controversial, multi-layered. There are a, just a host of different perspectives on this. And if you want to read one of the most um, probably succinct in favor of private equity investment in healthcare in defense of that position, um, you can read the response by the American Investment Council when the DOJ, HHS, and FTC ask for, um, they did an RFP seeking comments on the impact on competition. That was a very well done response. You mentioned um, some of the uh, quality reports to the contrary. Those that are attacking uh, private equity investment in healthcare, JAMA has a study that um, they've put out multiple times now more specifically focused on the hospital industry, that would be in direct contravention of the AIC's position. Well, what I think is very interesting, and there's so many facets of the debate, what I think is really interesting is kind of two elements. One is that the extent of PE investment in the U.S. healthcare provider market is actually so small, so much smaller than anyone realizes, and the growth in that has actually slowed. And the second is that private equity has been investing in the U.S. healthcare system for decades, multiple decades. So this isn't a new phenomenon. It just reached a real crescendo a couple of years ago. And, you know, I can talk a little bit more about the extent of both of those, but I think those are two really interesting elements that a lot of people don't understand how very small, but how long private equity has been investing in healthcare. I mean, to your point, the latest studies I saw were that private equity sponsored practice management groups and companies might employ five to seven percent of all physicians compared to relatively large numbers, you know, one large insurance company, which we, you know, are, are a fan of, it overall employs seven to eight percent of all physicians, just one, where the whole, the whole the group of private equity funds might be five to six percent or so, four to six percent. I mean, what gives on that? Why does private equity become such a target? Is it just a fun target for politicians? Because there's not really a defense to it. I mean, there's not really a you know, a, a lobby that defends against it. And there's not, you know, it's not a generally populist, exciting issue. But why is there, is it able to be demonized like that when it really is only five, six percent of physicians employed by private equity? Yeah, and I'll answer your question um, in a minute, but just to, to elaborate on the study that you're talking about, it was actually two. So the AMA does its annual physician benchmark study, and they've been putting this out for years. They did not introduce private equity as a category until I think about two years ago. And in their most recent study from 2023, the AMA reports that four and a half percent of physicians are employed by a group with some private equity affiliation, four and a half percent, whereas health system affiliation is north of 40 percent. And the health system component is growing at a greater clip than the private equity component. And then of course you have, you mentioned insurance company affiliations and uh, for-profit, um, kind of those large publicly traded. 
And then you're down to, according to the AMA study again, about 10% in true, true doctor-owned private practice. But again, the private equity portion is so small. PitchBook has a different study that doesn't just focus on physician practices. It focuses on the entire U.S. healthcare provider market. And so that market would comprise hospitals, surgery centers, labs, uh, physician groups, it's not pharma, it's not device, it's true, true patient touching providers. And PitchBook data reports just 4% across all provider types have private equity backing. So it's very interesting that how small it is. And yet, to your point, it's been such a target. And I think there's a lot of reasons why that happens. In part, it's private equity has been competing head to head with large health systems and insurance companies that have a very loud voice. Um, private equity has not been as well organized. Um, that's what the AIC has tried to do in recent years is get the private equity industry, if you can call it that, um, organized to kind of respond to some of the criticism. But I think a lot of People really don't understand how small that percentage is. No, I think that's exactly right. And then periodically, we've seen before over the last 20 years some big bankruptcies outside of private equity and healthcare. Recently, we've got some in healthcare. Why is there, whenever there's a big bankruptcy like Stuart Healthcare, you see just huge discussions, right? I mean, huge discussions of this. Yeah, and they get labeled as, and Stewart's interesting because Stewart will be uh, simultaneously, or maybe I should say alternatingly, um, defined as physician owned or private equity backed. But either way, you have people trying to define Stewart as not non for profit medicine, not for profit medicine publicly traded, but it's this other category that's very scary. That That's how you see those situations get defined. But then, of course, across the board, you have uh, poorly performing companies, poorly managed companies, poor quality companies, you know, regulatory issues with all types of healthcare companies outside or, or notwithstanding their ownership structure. And that's, I think, for those who are defensive of private equity investment in healthcare, I think that's one of the most frustrating points is that the corporate ownership gets defined as the problem when you have bad actors and good actors in all types of asset classes across the board, regardless of your corporate structure. Thank you. I mean, there's been such demonization of private equity the last few years like any class of, of assets or investment, there are certain particular challenges in private equity. The model basically does rely on a certain amount of leverage, meaning debt. So when things go well, it accelerates returns on investment or amplifies them. When things go poorly in a shrinking margin environment, if you pour a lot of debt on, you've got challenges. That doesn't mean we blow up the economic system or change the system, but it does mean you have to be cautious when investing in lower margin challenging businesses, because lots of debts on lower margin businesses is a prescription for challenges and problems. And that's been the case, you know, plenty of health systems have over leveraged gone broke without private equity. I mean, it just, it's, it's, it, it does mean that private equity stewards, and I hate to use that term with steward healthcare being the news, have to be careful in how much debt they pile on deals. I don't think we want to regulate that or put, uh, you know, restrictions on that. But it does create issues, and banks generally do a good job of trying to be cautious in how much debt they'll lend to a private equity sponsor or anybody uh, because they have to make sure they get paid back too. Uh, but it is a part of the of the system. Yeah, absolutely, and it's been a part of the system for a really, really long time, multiple decades. And we have some very successful U.S. healthcare companies that have been privately held, including with private equity funds, for multiple decades, I mean, multiple dating back into the 90s. You can even argue that HCA, founded in the 60s by the Fritz family and, and Jack Massey, 
And that was privately held. It became publicly traded. It was then taken back private by two very large private equity firms, Bain and KKR, in 2006. Private equity investment in U.S. healthcare has been there for a really, really long time. And to your point, it is a it is fundamentally part of the system. I am always in big favor of continuing to look and probe and how can we be better. Um, I, I, I don't mind the inquiry at all. There's always room for improvement. But this idea that private equity investors fundamentally in and of themselves and brand new are, you know, creating all these ills in the system is just that just does not ring true. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Again, Amber Walsh, private equity in the crosshairs, a defense of private equity investing in healthcare. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Becker Private Equity Podcast. Thank you, Scott.